Hi guys, this is Vishal here from Trapco. So in this video, we will understand the concept of environments. So we, we keep talking about environments like staging environment, beta environment, environment variable. So let's understand a bit that what exactly these environments are and how they are used in the application. So environments are basically an application running with particular set of configuration which you can choose on the basis of what exactly you are building, right? So let's say I am building a marketplace and I want my data when my development team is building it in the configuration to be different from my uh, testing team, which is testing the application, building data, sending email, sending notification is different from my production data, production application, which is different, right? Why it is needed? Because when development team is building it, they will be creating a lot of junk data, a lot of things which you don't want your uh, actual users to see, right? At the same time, they may be sending emails, which you don't want to go from your domain. So maybe you want to create some variables. Maybe you, you have done integration with payment gateway. So the testing team or the development team will not make payment using actual credit card, right? Because they need a sandbox environment because the payment gateway is also provide you sandbox environment. So environment is something which is completely different set of configuration, set of rules for the people who are developing it, for the people who are are testing it, reviewing changes, maybe product managers, the QA people, and your actual live users, right? So these are called environments. So we have environment support almost everywhere. You can segregate data on the basis of environment that what your testing team will see, what your development team will see, and what your production people will see. Right? Even the users can be different, the login, passwords, roles, all these things can be completely different. Second thing, environments are uh, used in uh, visibility. Let's say you don't want to show or hide something on the base of environment. So if it is a preview environment, maybe I have some button which deletes some record, but I don't want that button in my production environment, which is a live environment, right? Or maybe uh, like plugins configuration, I already mentioned that uh, you are using a payment gateway and you don't want your testing team to be testing with real money, right? So they need a, a sandbox environment, right? Uh, other examples could be could be external APIs, right? You are making a call to API. So when you're testing it, you want to send it to your CRM or to Slack, which is a different channel. But in your live environment, you want to publish it to some different channel. Emails, you want to send some with other domain during testing, during development. But the live users, you want email to be going in uh, with some other domain. So all these settings can be configured on the basis of environment. So let's see a couple of things, okay? So the very first thing we talk about collection. So in trap code, like you get two environments by default, which is preview staging, which is more like a development environment and then production or the live environment. We have two more options, which is beta alpha or like sandbox or UAT, which can be configured as per your need, but these are not available by default, right? So there's a, some extra cost for these two, right? So, but generally you can have one environment when you are building it or your team is building it. And once they have done building the changes, they can push those changes to production environment, which is live environment. So here you can see I have some data, which is a testing data. But if I switch my environment to production, I don't have any data, right? Because this is all junk data, all test data, which my development team has created, but it has nothing to do with the actual user's data. So now let's go and add some data in a live environment. This is for my end users when they are accessing the application. So let's say I create a company. Okay, and I'll just save. So I've created data. This is for my end user and this is for my development team, right? Or testing team. So now let's go and click preview. So let's say I have a list of uh, company where we are just displaying the list of these companies, the company data, which is there. And I'll open company collection in new table, right? So now let's click preview. So when you click preview, it by default opens the preview environment, which is the development environment. So I will see three companies, which are there now. If I go and add one more company, we'll see it here. Now, my end user will not see this. They will see the published environment, which is a different URL altogether, right? So I can publish the changes if you want. So these are for the changes if you're doing in the, the flow, the design and all data, you, you don't need to publish. So if I click publish, I should be able to see some page uh, because I have not published my changes. So I just let click publish and let's be the published page. Okay. So this was my preview page, which is company list. 
I just append the company list here only in the published page. So this is my live environment. So my actual user will only see Google, which is coming from my live environment. So this is one use case where you have data separate for testing development and there's actual data, which is for the live environment. Now let's say I want to show hide something. I say in my live environment, don't show this delete button. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll go to the settings, this eye icon, and here I choose visibility environment with visibility, right? So I can say hide on preview or hide on production. So as I mentioned, by default, there are two environments configured, but if you if more environments are configured, you will see all these options here. So I'll say hide on live. I just clicked it. Okay. Now I go and publish the changes. So I am saying don't show this delete button to my end users for the live environment, but during development, they can delete this data. That's fine. Okay. So now this is my preview environment, which is preview. I'll say reload. So I'm still seeing the delete button. But if I go and reload here, I will not see the delete button because I have disabled it in the live environment. Can you see? Let's add one more thing. I'll go to my component. Let's drop a heading here. Okay. And let's say I'll mark it as red and maybe just move it towards the center. And let's say font color, I'll say red and see preview that's all okay now i am saying hide on production same thing i don't want to show it to production i have to publish because any changes to production goes only when you publish it now if i reload this okay so i'm not seeing that heading i'm not seeing the delete button but this is my preview so here I should see the heading and I should see the delete button. So the visibility is controlled. The data is controlled. There are a lot of other things which you can control. So if I go to external APIs, so external APIs, you can actually use variables. Okay. So I go to my app settings. There's a concept of environment variables. Let's say I'm calling Stripe and Stripe has a different URL for uh, live environment and a different URL for production environment. Let's say I'm saying Stripe base url okay and value is let's say first of all i'll say just copy the same value but i can change on the base of the environment so i'm saying in a stripe preview use let's say sandbox.stripe.com but in production continue use the stripe okay same thing let's say stripe api key It's just some random value. Okay, I'll say create. Right, and then I can change this key on the basis of what values are for production environment, what values are for sandbox environment, right? Now let's go to external API. So let's say I want to call an API, I want to fetch some data from Stripe. So I'll say fetch invoices. Okay. Uh, get call. Now I want to send some API URL. So I am saying base URL take from my environment variables. Can you see environment variables? I can see this is my URL. This is my key. So let's say I want to copy URL. So here's the URL and after that, whatever the URL is for fetching invoices. And let's say I want to pass the key in the, uh, so let's say this is the URL to fetch the invoices and the key will go into header. So let's say API key. Same thing here. I can, instead of hard coding it, I can say pick from my uh, environment variable. So these things will get replaced when the application is running either in production environment or preview environment. So this URL will also come from those variables and this key will also come from those variables. So when you are executing or like using the application, it will bring dummy data when it is in uh, sandbox environment, but it will bring actual data when you are in production environment. So this is another way to pass the data on the base of environments. Uh, one more thing we have is in the events. So let's say I created an event, let's say save data. Okay. 
and probably I am sending uh, saving a data. So I'll send the collection save data to some collection. It's a company collection, which is fine. Now probably I'm sending some email notification. I'm saying dynamic email. Okay, and I've chosen some email template or some people and all those things. Now I don't want to send this email when my testing team is testing something, right? So what we can do, we can just disable these environments. You see as of now it's enable in preview, enable in production. So I can go here and I'll say disable action and I can disable in preview. I'm saying in preview, don't send these emails. So it is grayed out. So this event will run, this action will get executed, save data, but email will not go. Same thing, let's say I'm submitting this record to my CRM. So I'll say external API, send data to external API, some XYZ API, okay. And I can just go and disable them that, okay, don't send this data to my live server, right? So you can basically enable or disable actions on the base of environment. So this is another use case. Apart from that, in plugin also, when you are uh, integrating any plugin, let's say you are uh, calling some API, like, like we discussed Stripe payment gateway, right? So in that case, you install the plugin. So there is one option where you can give the keys hard coded. And there's another option where you can actually bring the keys from the environment, right? So it is saying, instead of giving a hard coded keys, take the keys from the environment variables and on the basis of what environment are these keys will be provided so that uh, while testing, you go to a test environment and while production, you do an actual payment with an actual card on a live environment, right? So these are a couple of use cases where we can control the complete behavior of the application on the basis of who is the user and what is the purpose, whether they are testing it, whether they are building it or whether they are live user using the actual application. Hope you understood the concept of environments. See you again in the next video. Bye-bye.